morning, guys. Good morning, um, guys. We're not using the lapel mics today because they plug into... You know how the new phones don't have headphone jacks? So you got to plug into the... Will you charge it? Oh, your phone's charging? The phone's at 8%. Oh. And I ain't trying to wait for it to charge. So you know what? We're just doing it now. I'm sure it could pick us up. It probably doesn't sound exactly the way it normally sounds, but I'm sure you can hear me. Get her done. Yeah. I'm sure you heard that. Um, It is Thursday night for us. Friday morning for you guys. T-G-I-F. Hi, babe. Hi. Hi, guys. I just hydrated myself. That's so, my water, actually. I just brought that, I think. No, the other one. Yeah, this is yours. Mm -hmm. That you're claiming my water. No. So anyways, guys, um... We just had a coffee and a little snack. With Auntie Helen and Hassan. Yeah. So I told them that the reason the devotion was going to be short is their fault. Because they talked my ear off. Auntie Helen wasn't going to have it, though. She said you better give her a full one. Nope. Nope. That's the consequences of keeping me out late. Auntie consequences. Auntie Helen said she wanted to see me on here today, so that's why I'm on here. Oh, I see, I see. And what Auntie Helen wants, she gets. Yeah. Yes. So I heard, um, I haven't had a chance to watch it though yet, the Esther Bible study. But it was really good. Yeah, we got through chapters 1 and 2, because there's 10 chapters in that book. And um, kind of uh, the young brother. Now you're yawning. Stop. Stop it. You stop. You stop it. So the young brother that went with us to eat. I, I don't know how to say his name. Devante. I, I think it's something different. It's something like that. All right. I'm just going to call him D. Because Devante, I could say that. But I can't say his name. All right. D. But the brother asked a question after he goes... Um, he goes, I know the Bible is there, everything is there to learn from it, to get from it. What is it to learn from this? Because we went through chapter one and two, you know, and I said, well, that's a good question. I said, but I wouldn't say so much as what we're going to get out of this because chapter one and two is like setting the stage for the next eight chapters. I said, so there is a lot to learn from it, but... We had to get past this part. And he goes, oh, I get it. I understand. You know, because um, there's a lot that comes with Esther, the book of Esther. There's a lot to learn from it, a lot to glean from it. But you got to, I was talking a lot about the timeline, the, the context of what was happening, who the king was, what he was about, some of the traditions, her situation of being Jewish and hiding that she, she's Jewish. So there's a lot of things that we had to set in place before the story really starts next week. Well, I do know one thing that it isn't going to talk about that is important to know that um, that God isn't mentioned in... Yeah, I talked about that. Okay. Um, and what's really, really awesome is that, um, you know, there is... Um, there is I, I remember that we mentioned this maybe, maybe way, way at the beginning of our devotionals. I remember at the way, way beginning of our devotionals, how we talked about how there can be um, some, there can be some, or maybe a Christian singer or something like that, that, you know, or, or a secular, maybe a secular movie that is geared, geared towards Christianity that can maybe talk about, um, you know, a, a Christianity in some sort, but not really, that could be, oh, sorry, a Christian film that can be made by a non-Christian believer, but yet then can actually touch the hearts, you know, of the people, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, that, that even though, um, 
and I think that we've mentioned this before that sometimes not everything not everything in life always you know has to implicate or has to you know come or has to mention the word of God in order for it to have an impact on people mm -hmm. that can lead them towards God you know and I think we've mentioned this before a very very long time ago I remember and I think we were referring to to Esther Remember one time we were talking about that? Mm, vaguely, not really, to be honest with you. I mean, I hear what you're saying, and, and I explained it in the Bible study. We talked about that oh, you for did. quite some time. See, see, I miss out on that because I'm not in there right now. Yeah, that even though God wasn't mentioned, mm -hmm. his fingerprints are all over all the place. All over the place. Yeah, that's what so, I meant. Yeah, yeah, so we did talk about that. Um, you know, and, and I think it's a it's a good study. And um, I think it's an important study, you know, and it was, it was crazy because in the last uh, 12 years I've been teaching a Bible study. Um, I might have done Ruth, though. I might go back on what I said, because I said I'd never done a study on one of the, you know, because there's a book of Ruth, there's a book of Esther, the two books about women, specifically about women. You did Ruth a very, very long time ago. Yeah, so I did, but... Yeah. In the, so in the last 12 years of having House of Rest, I did Ruth. Yeah, you did. Now I'm doing Esther. In the last 12 years of every Wednesday doing a Bible study. And, and, and then somebody came along in the comments. I know it's not a regular. Said, oh, I hope you're not going to teach unbiblically about women preaching. And I'm like, what does the book of Esther have to do with preaching? And... I don't know. Um, it was get confused me with that question because um, I noticed, and the reason I say that I noticed because I was raised in in uh, Spanish churches, and Spanish churches um, they're very sexist toward women. To be honest with you, I'm just gonna be straight up because this is my channel, so I can say it. You know, very sexist, and and for whatever reason, I don't know if it comes with the machismo or whatever, like. Like, really, the one time I'm going to do a study on Esther, somebody, a man's going to get threatened by that? Like, so I think, should we take it up with God to take out the book of Esther out of the Bible? Like, really? Mm -hmm. You know? Like, obviously, God is comfortable with having the book of Esther. Obviously, God is comfortable with having the book of Ruth. So if we're going to feel some type of way about doing a study on a book in God's Word then maybe the real issue we have is with God, the author and finisher of our faith. And that, I found that weird. Yeah. You know, I found that very weird. Uh, but whatever, there's weirdos out there, you know. And, um, you know, like I've said it before, well, man. Jesus, Jesus came from a lineage of some very strong women. Yeah, what I've said before is this. There's a thousand channels, and we're going to teach what's biblical. And you know what? The book of Esther is biblical it's in the bible and if somebody has an issue with that keep it moving i don't have time for that you know we're gonna just love jesus serve jesus believe his word read his word from beginning to end genesis to revelation and i'm sorry for some of you guys there's two books named after women um and let me remind you you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a woman you didn't come out of a man's body i hope not <laughs> if, if you did or if you got hatched sometime or something, you're an alien. You know, we all came from a woman. And I get it. Some men have been um, so mistreated by women that they have an issue with women. But nevertheless, I'm sorry uh, to let you know that you came from a woman. That's just what it is. You know, um, so um, we're going to read through the book of Esther. We're going to enjoy it. We're gonna love it because it's God's word, and we're gonna we're gonna glean from it, and we're gonna get from it, you know, and and become better believers because of it. Because any time you're in the Word of God, you're gonna get something from it, you know. And and that's just weird to me, you know, the fact that anybody would have an issue with a book that is in God's Word. Oh my God, I have the best prop for RBT. Best prop. Yeah, 
What are you talking about? That little about? tiny violin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right here, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, no, it was. I don't know what it said. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, anyways, guys. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's my venting, you know. I, I, and, and I just, like, if it's somebody if it's somebody that is a new Christian, okay, I get it. But usually, it's not a new well, Christian. if it's a sincere question. Hold on. But ultimately, a new Christian ain't going to come up with an ignorant comment like that. So I know it's somebody that probably thinks they know more than what they do. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's probably why this channel don't grow, because I'll just say straight up stuff like that, but whatever. Whatever. Um, so didn't have a direct subject to talk about today, uh, but I did want to talk about this. Is that um, today, earlier today, Sharon did a really, really great discussion uh, with Cholo Trucker on his channel. Um, he does, I didn't realize, I noticed once in a while he it would pop up about child molestation. I didn't realize that he had said he would do a whole year once a month on yeah, that subject. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that because I know a year ago he did talk to Sharon. He, he talked to Eli about your guys' um, up, upright, up, upraising? What's the word? Uh, yeah, your childhood, you know? Your childhood. And um, and then he himself shared some of the things that happened to him before. But I didn't know he had made that that comment that he would um, dedicate a video once a month to to bring light to the subject of child molestation. Yeah, I I didn't realize um, the that he was a big advocate. Yeah, um, yeah, he had uh, such advocacy towards you know uh, you know this this subject which was which is huge guys you know it which made me made me think about made me think about something though guys um because i guess he's been trying to um donate every single time he does this monthly and i think the reason why he does this monthly as mm -hmm. well is because of of raising funds also to donate to an organization um for this cause, for victims of it. yeah, for victims of uh, of, of sexual molestation um, and all. But I thought to myself, you know, if this is something that is so obviously we're so passionate about, and um, and he's so passionate about, and it's something that he's been doing yearly and once um, once a month. Um, Cholo, I know you're watching this. But keep your eye on the road. Yes, keep your eye on the road. I just want you to listen to me, though. Because when somebody has such an advocacy towards something that they're so passionate about, um, I really do truly believe that, you know, you should actually start an organization yourself, you know. And and I think that it's it's something that you should really pray about. And um, because it's obviously something that you've continued every month um, and you have really put so much of thought and so much heart into it. And there's a lot of us, a lot of us that are here with you and, and just have locked arms with you. And we believe in this. We really, really, truly believe in this because there's many of us that have gone through this that have... Um, you know, and I know that there will be so many people that will back you up on this. And um, I believe that that you should really consider um, starting your own organization um, towards this cause. And um, think about it like I'm being serious, because if you can't find an organization for that, then I think you should go register your, your own organization um, towards it and um, and name it and uh, and go full force for it because if you give your organization a name for it then you can go ahead and distribute that to children who actually fall victims of this um, there there is out there a lot of a lot of uh, places that can actually use um, that that those funds that you can you can use literature you can put it towards literature um, to bring awareness to schools 
you can uh, use it uh, for literature to bring awareness to rehabs to homes where there's a lot of um, women that are going through you know uh, abuse and a lot of different places and I really really do believe that you have um, the support of so many that that love you and um, man that would uh, be there to to help you and guide you through it so yeah, I wanted well, to throw that out. You know what he's going to say in the comment? Mm. He's going to say, I throw that back at you, Sharon, because you obviously are very passionate about it. I, I am, I am passionate about it. You know what? I'll tell yeah. you I'll tell you this. I've, I've always been an advocate for not just teen moms, you know, and, and all of that. But I think this is something that a lot of us can come together to do do together, you know, because I... I do have a passion for it. I've had a passion for for this for a very, very long time, you know, and I think that we should... So does Eli. Yeah, we should do this. I really believe that we should do this together and go for it, you know, because there's so many people that need to hear, and I think we should gather the stories of so many people and create a book and put it out there because people need to share their stories. They need to share their testimonies and we seriously need to get literature out there, you know, in bulks and just send it out to centers and centers and centers and really bombard, you know, these places with, you know, with, um, with just different stuff, man, you know, just to bring awareness, um, to, to people. I really believe that. Mm. I see two strong Speaking points. Speaking engagements. I, I see two strong points of, um, what, the Chola Trucker videos do. One is it, it um, of course, I'm speaking from somebody that didn't go through that, but just from the outside looking in. One is that by talking about it, it helps people that have hit it, that said, oh man, other people have gone through this. On the other side, it helps parents that, it, that they have small children of what to look for so that doesn't happen. Absolutely. To their children, so I mean, and pro there's probably other things, other things that I'm not, I'm not thinking of top of my head, but I think that is huge because um, I, every time you guys do a video, there's people on there that say, "Man, this happened to me, and I've never said nothing to anybody." Well, well one thing that that um, Auntie Helen, me and her were talking about right now when we went to went to have coffee, is that this is really, really huge in. Um, and the the old mentality of of the old way of thinking is that families did not like to talk about it. They they they're just you know don't talk about that. It's done with, and they sweep it under the rug. And mm -hmm. especially in the Latino community, unfortunately, those are the types of things that you know what no se habla de esas cosas, and just they just brush it under the rug and you just pretty much it's it's something that's not dealt with and they brush it under the rug and we just grow up and it's just never talked about anymore and what's what happens is that that child grows up never never ever dealing with the issue and there's never any healing that happens and they grow up thinking that this is something that's never you know they just never deal with it and the issues come later on as an adult, you know, mm -hmm. as a teenager, if they even make it to the late teens or the young adults, because sometimes suicide comes and sometimes the, the mental illness and, and, you know, and all that, that all that comes and it, and it, and it destroys a person as a young adult or a, as an adult, you know, yeah. they make the wrong choices. They end up in drugs. They end up getting beaten. They end up, you know, becoming the abuser because of all the anger, the men, you know, they end up becoming those abusers and, and all the anger, the enragement that comes with it. And it's just, you know, there's just so much because it never gets dealt with because families don't talk about it. You know what, what I noticed though, over time, um, I've known a, a few families that um, child molestation was in their family, and I and what and I'm probably sure there's exceptions. I'm not saying that everybody's this or everybody's that, but I've noticed that the families that deal with it, there's a lot of it in their generations, and then the families that don't, don't. 
you know, and, and I find that quite interesting. And I'm sure there's middle ground there. I'm sure I'm, I'm guessing there's got to be a family where one person victimized people, but it, it didn't carry on and carry on. But I, I notice a majority, it carries and it goes through the generations. I don't, I mean, obviously as a Christian, I'm going to say that that's, that's generational stuff, but um, I'm not sure if that is st statistically true that when it happens, usually it just goes back and back and back, you know? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know enough about the subject um, to know, to make that assessment, but it just, what I've known and, and I've, in, in the past, I notice it's either there and it's very rampant or it's not, but yeah. I could be wrong. I would think that the moment that it, it does become aware of, you would think that it would stop because you become more aware of something and, and, it, and, and you, you know what to keep an eye out for. You know what I'm saying? So you, you don't let your children around that person. You just, you know, you just well, become more. Perfect example is because you have been vocal. I believe it stopped with you. Yeah, exactly. You know, but I think generations passed because they kept it quiet, because they don't get talked about, because this and that, it allowed it to become rampant. Yeah. But because you being vocal, it stopped. Yeah. It stopped with your children, yeah. you yeah. know? And I think that's a, a big, huge yeah. deal. Yeah, absolutely. Know? And that's important, yeah. you know? But yeah, guys, um, his videos on, on, obviously, his channel, Cholo Trucker, he does it once a month. So he had Sharon on there. So after this video, you can go on there. And I think he was going to put the link to... The first time because today was more just of a discussion yeah. a discussion just sort of like a follow-up from the first yeah. time that i really gave my testimony but um yeah it was interesting guys it was really really interesting you know just sharing some views and everything um which i think it it's it's actually really really nice when you can just um be able to share our input and just share um because i know that from the last time till now he has he finally got an opportunity to to share with his mom yeah which was something different because his mom got to see his video from when he actually came out and shared what had happened to him and that was the first time since then he has shared yeah. and that was a big deal yeah i know he wanted to get you and eli at the same time yeah but eli was on had a speaking engagement yeah, he's in montana right now yeah. and he actually did, was speaking somewhere again. yeah yeah i saw it on his on his facebook um i did want to talk about this too real quick is i'm looking at this stuff real quick and it made me think of something um so as you guys know we're gonna do this highway one ride from san francisco to santa monica in february and um everybody so far that's doing it has a bike except him so we finally helped him locate a bike because brother Tomas was selling his bike. It's a road bike. It's a trek actually, and um, and we have our 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 mechanic. His his name is uh, um, John. Yeah, John, and we call him the the Yoda. The Yoda because this guy has been he's a <laughs> bike Yoda. Pro professional cyclist has his own bike shop. Is now retired. Um, has his own shop, but he still rides. Like he'll. A short ride to him is a 50 mile in the morning. He'll do yeah. a 50 mile ride and then he'll work on bikes. But anyways, um, so I approached him with my bike and I'm like, hey, is there anything I can do to make my bike better and more efficient for the hills of Highway 1? Sent him a picture of my bike and he looked at it and he goes, yeah, there's one thing you can do. Is you change your rear cassette where the gears are in the back. I said, like, why? He goes, because... You actually can get something else that adds two lower gears to your bike than what you already have. And that helps you go up the hills better. So then I asked him when he, so when he agreed to buy Tomas's bike, which is a Trek, right? Same thing. You know, I said, hey, here are the pictures of his bike. What would you add? What would make this bike more efficient? And, and you know, I always take a biblical lesson out of everything, right? So he looks at the pictures and he goes, well, uh, I would change the pedals. I would change the handlebars. I would change the gears just like yours in the back. There's actually an upgrade to make it more efficient for the hills. You know, and um, so I'll, I told Chola Trucker, I'm like, listen, we got this bike here. 
We're going to get it to you. But our Yoda said to change this and this and this. It's your it's your choice. It's you know, I mean, it's up to you. The bike is ready, the bike is nice, it's ready mm -hmm. to go. And he goes, "No, you know what? Man, I appreciate that. I do want to make those upgrades." You know, and I like that because in the same way, in the same way where if if it's in the physical, I can prepare for a bike ride to be most efficient for that type of terrain and that type of distance. In the same way, we need to ask ourselves and ask the Lord, Lord, you have called me for evangelism, or you've called me to preach, or you've called me to teach, you've called me, what do I need to upgrade myself for the longevity of this ride, for the longevity of what you've called me to do in this life? Because for instance, if you take this bike to the beach, the, the tires are so thin, Slip. They're not going to sink in the sand. That's why you need a beach cruiser because they have those big fat big tires fat ones, yeah. that stay on top of the sand. Uh, if you're going to go on hills and rocks, and you're going to need a mountain bike. You know, so in the same way, it's a good thing to say, Lord, you have called me for this. So what do I need to do in order to prepare myself to equip myself, yeah. to equip myself for what you have called me to do? Because I'll tell you right now, if I'm called... If someone, not me, if somebody is called to preach to New York compared to somebody that's called to preach to El Paso, Texas, two complete different places. Yeah. So God has to prepare you for those the, the type of people that are there and the type of people that are there, the culture that is there, the everything, the surroundings, everything. God is going to prepare you differently, you know, because um, the brother uh, um, Julio from Texas, you know, he's really excited he loves Texas. It's funny because he's from Livingston, which is here in California. He's from the Valley, which is, he's grew up maybe 20 minutes away from House of Rest Church. That's where he's from. But he loves Texas. He's been there for quite a few years and loves it. And um, he goes, man, would you ever move here? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, and... Um, and he goes, why not? You know, he goes, man, the, the, the housing is cheaper. You can get a church a lot cheaper. And this and that. I said, because here's the thing. God has called me for Modesto. He's equipped me for Modesto. You know, and I like what I, I think I heard somebody who was a T.D. Jakes or somebody say that just because I succeeded here, if all of a sudden God would tell me to go to Bob, I mean, not, not sorry, not if God told him, he goes, if I thought, well, man, I'm doing great here in Texas, I should go to Boston or Atlanta and, and just do the same thing. He goes, I probably wouldn't do nothing because God called me for this place. God equipped me for this place, you know, and, and it just made me think of it because I'm looking at these things here because I got to I got to take a uh, Chola Trucker's bike on Monday. Monday at 8 30 to uh, to John's to do all these adjustments and whatnot and it just made me think that that the Lord is not only going to call you for somewhere he's going to equip you he's he's going to upgrade you he's he's going to um, make you efficient now even though the bike is good enough it has gears it has handlebars already but it's going to make his job harder without the upgrades yeah. so in the same way just I guess what I'm trying to say is God has equipped you for something. So learn to stay in your own lane. Yeah. Learn to stay where God has called you to do. That's why like when we do the the evangelism on Monday nights and the, you know, sometimes when we get a chance to go and Eli's there, um, I stand back and let Eli do his thing. Do I get on the mic? Yeah, I will. But I don't go there as oh, I'm the pastor of house of rest. So I'm running this thing. I stand back. Because that's not my lane. That's Eli's lane. And, and and yeah, I'll take 10 minutes and get on the mic and share. But ultimately, I know I'm not an evangelist. Yeah, and you know what the beautiful thing is, too, though, is that we see the fruit that comes out of there. And here's what we do. Like Wednesday nights, yesterday, the fruit that came out of there, what do we do? We go and we fellowship with them. And we pour into them, mm -hmm. you know. But Eli is in Montana, Eli's in Montana, ministering in Montana, but then the fruit that came out of Monday, we're with them and we're pouring into them. But that's what we're called to do. Yeah, so those yesterday's video we did at, at the Grubhub, 
those two young boys and, and, then, the, young and the young man. Yeah. Those are fruit and product of our Monday night evangelism. You know, actually some, I, I wasn't there, but somebody pulled up mm -hmm. one Monday and started, started basically trying to school Eli, telling him what you're doing here is a waste. You're just yelling and waving flags. There's no fruit. There's no nothing that's going to come of this. Let me pray for you. And Eli's like, I don't need your prayers. You know, and yesterday you saw two young boys and a young man. They're with us. Why are they with us? Because we're the ones that are going to pour in what the evangelist did in bringing them. Yeah. That's a perfect example of a fivefold ministry working hand in hand with an evangelist, working with the pastor and, and working with us. So now that, that the evangelist brought them, now we're going to pour into them. You know, for, for the very fact that somebody said, what are you guys doing out here? You're wasting your time with a loudspeaker, with worship music. That ain't going to do nothing. Really? It ain't going to do nothing? You know what that is? It's somebody... That's an evangelist staying in his lane, doing what he's called to do, and we're staying in our lane, what we're called to do, and it works exactly the way the Word says. Amen. Why? Because God has equipped us and upgraded us for the task at hand. Yeah. In the same way with these bikes, same thing. You, know, you can look at life and look at situations and look at things and say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to learn about this? And you know, you know what's so beautiful is that um, here we have two youth, young boys, and um, one of them plays the acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. the other one plays bass, and they're excited to want to come practice. Yeah. And then we have a young, a young adult, 25-year-old young adult. This guy is sharp, young, sharp young man, huh? Who is going through, who is going through so much right now in his life, who is living out of the gospel mission, and guys... I didn't know Bobo was here. Yeah. Happy we, birthday, Mimo. We didn't even get us. Where I are you know. going? I'll go uh, meet one of my friends. You're not working? No. Okay, hold on, wait. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bobo. Happy birthday to you. We wanted to. Right, thank you. Wanted so, to. I have a gift for you tomorrow. Okay. I know. We didn't know you were here. We didn't even get to do nothing with you. Oh. Well, the boys obviously got to well, stream your door. <laughs> I know that was awesome. But really, Miho, happy birthday! I'm, I'm proud of you, Thank you, and we do have a gift for you tomorrow. All right, All right bye, Miho. I'm gonna be back in a little bit. All right, be All right. careful. All right, bye. bye. So, okay. so it was Bobo's birthday, and I th he went to work that night. Yeah. And Abraham decided to stream his door with a whole bunch of strings sideways and all over his door. And he yeah. walked out of his door with a, his door being all streamed. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I really, really wanted to. Um, it's just amazing because, you know, you have this young man, 25-year-old young man. And um, he he. Living at the gospel mission day by day, he actually goes over there. It's a homeless shelter. Yeah, it's a homeless shelter, and he doesn't even have a bed there yet, but he goes day by day to get a, a bed every day. And food. And food. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No, just two meals a day. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he ate dinner with us. He saw that yeah, burrito he had you yesterday, guys right? Saw, he loved his burrito, but he goes there twice a day to try to get a meal twice a day, and um, he has to go daily so he can try to get a bed daily but you know what he said he said that he is the most joyous and the happiest he's ever been huh and and that it touched my heart and it moved my heart it filled my spirit to hear him say i'm the happiest i've ever been now than i've ever been ever before because i have jesus in my life mm -hmm. And guys, that was just so amazing to to hear this come out of a 25-year-old young man who doesn't even have a roof over his head. But he says, he says, I'm happy. He goes, I count it all joy. And man, I just, you know, 
I was just so blessed. I was just so, so blessed because I remember the first day that I seen him and I said, there's something so special about you. Something so special about you. And yesterday he says, I know God's called me to preach. He's called me to preach the word of God. He's all, I'm going to have a church one day. And that's exactly what he said, huh? Yeah. I'm going to, in, in summary, in like three sentences, I'm going to say this. Or maybe more, a few more sentences. Mm -hmm. A few months ago when Eli first started this, I think the very first time we went, because mm -hmm. Eli started this thing a few weeks before we even went. Yeah. And we went, and this young man came, and we ended up giving him a ride, because he, he needed a ride. I don't know if I was ever, ever going to see him again. And he basically said this. Here's the thing, right? Before you anybody comes to conclusions, well, this young man is, maybe he's lazy. That's why he's homeless. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's on drugs. No, here's the thing, is that he moved to Modesto to follow his brother. Then his brother got into his own thing. So then he had a job and got his own apartment. And he let his friends stay there. And while he was out working, this one was smoking weed. And he ended up losing his apartment because the friend was smoking weed. Apparently he was told not to. The landlord smelled it, told him, you keep it up, I'm going to kick you out. And while he's at work, his friend kept smoking weed. That's messed up. So all of a sudden... He loses his apartment, don't have a deposit for nothing. So he ends up homeless. So in the midst of this, he's asking God, why is this happening to me? And we happen to be evangelizing on that corner. Mm -hmm. We prayed for that young man. I gave him a ride to the gospel. To the Salvation, Army, to the at Salvation that Army at that time. I gave him a ride. And, and he just said, man, thank you so much, you know. And he told us yesterday that he was in complete darkness that day. But since then, every Monday... He, he goes was, to a class. He was he coming out of a class and would pass by every Monday. And, and I would see him every yeah. every time we'd see him. And he'd be smiling and he'd say hi to us every time. And he'd see somebody yeah. from there and he'd say hello. Yeah, so one of the times we were in L.A., we weren't there. We saw these pictures because they always send us pictures, guys, of whoever Johnny's is always taking pictures and... We saw a picture with him holding a sign. Yeah, yeah. So he stopped and held a sign. And anyways, let's fast forward. Now he's attending House of Rest. Now he's with us. You got to meet him really quickly yesterday eating mm -hmm. his burrito. And um, he's 25. He's homeless. And he has the joy of the Lord. And he knows that God is going to open doors. And he knows that he's going to preach the gospel someday. Mm -hmm. And he knows who he seeks out for. You know, and... He's and, so smart. Yeah, and just really awesome guys. So um anyways, um if it is getting late, I'm gonna end the video. Is that it? Yeah. Or, or yeah. Yeah. So. Once again, guys, um anybody interested in going to the campus house on uh Saturday, your local, four o'clock, um, let me know, message me, you know, house arrest uh church at gmail dot com. Let me know, uh give you some more information, okay? All right, guys. All right. We love you guys so much. Bye. Bye.